What's going on? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, which I wouldn't either, this channel sucks. This is my 2019 Ram 1500 Laramie edition. Don't move on my camera. It has fucking shit. I don't have the 12 inch screen. I don't have the panoramic roof. I don't have the rear heated and cooled seats, but this truck does have a trailer tow package. It does not have a trailer brake controller. It's got the 392 gear in the back. It's got black leather all the way around. It does have the 8.4 inch screen front heated and cooled seats because I only care about who's sitting in the front. No one really sits in the back anyways. Plenty of USB ports, plenty of storage, the works. If you wanna see more in-depth uh, views and features of this truck, I've got plenty of videos on it. I don't wanna bore you with those, but I do have 10,522 miles on this truck as I am making this vehicle. Video on this vehicle. My goodness, Dave, I figured there's probably not too many 2019 Ram 1500 trucks out there with this many miles. And if there is, they probably have not posted about it on YouTube yet. Now here's the thing about that is people wanna see longevity. Now 10,000 miles, eh, it's not that many miles, but you kinda of figure out like the quirks and things you don't like and the things you do like. Because I have drove this truck to Oklahoma and back. I've drove this truck to Houston and back while towing a 4,500 pound fat ass Hellcat on a steel trailer. So I've done some towing and I've definitely driven this thing. I mean, I did just take it to Colorado also, and that's when my four wheel drive stopped working, but that was fixed under warranty. So this is my 10,000 mile review of my 2019 Ram 1500. Now, with every vehicle, no matter what you buy, I don't care how much you spend, there's going to be things you like, things you don't like, things that can be fixed and things that can't be fixed, but we, as a society, we always want everything perfect. Well, that's just not gonna happen, but I will give you the things I don't like and the things I do like about this 2019 Ram 1500. And we're gonna go with the things I don't like first because they're really small, and honestly, they're not that big of a deal. So, let's get right into it. Of course, when you make a video, it doesn't make as much noise. But what's really annoying about this truck, and I drive this truck every day, is I put my elbow here to rest on the center console and it likes to make these little squeaky, really annoying noises. It is so frustrating how annoying that is. Now, I could probably take that to the dealer and get it fixed, but it's just one of those annoyance things where it's like, you don't really have time to take it to the dealer because you're working and you don't want to get a shitty rental, but at the same time, it is so damn annoying. That annoys me the most. Second thing, I've made a video about this before. There is a very loud piercing noise coming through the mirror gap. And I know this because people have put tape over the mirror gap, so it's where the mirrors actually fold in. Air gets trapped right in that small little gap and it just makes this loud piercing noise. And I made a video about it. It's the number one thing I hate about this truck, but it only happens at certain times, at certain speeds on the highway, going a certain direction, the wind's blowing a certain way, Jesus is walking on water that day. So many things have to happen for it to happen, but that used to annoy the crap out of me, but I don't do as much highway driving, so it really doesn't bother me. And some people say it's from the windshield, but I do believe it's from the mirror caps because I have seen people put tape over them and it stops. And when I've been on the highway, I've actually folded the mirrors in and it stopped the noise. So that's number two. Number three. What was number three? Oh shit. I'm gonna cut this right here. Number three, there is a noise in the front end, but it may be from the spacer lift. So I don't know for sure if that's strictly from the Ram or if it's from the spacer lift, but it sounds like something is clicking and clacking around all day when I hit bumps. It is so frustrating, it's so annoying. I honestly think it's from the spacer lift 
And if it's not, I'm gonna be really pissed. I'll make a video about it because it's gonna drive me nuts. But the fourth thing that really drives me nuts, it doesn't bother me as much anymore. Once again, it's kind of one of those things you get used to, was the gas mileage. So a lot of people already know this that have Ram 1500s, the same as mine. The, this one has the 392 gears. So it only gets 12 miles a gallon in the city. So it's got the better gears for towing. However, you sacrifice some of the daily driving aspects for towing, but you got to give and get. So this one does get pretty good, pretty good, pretty bad gas mileage. It only gets 12.9 miles per gallon, but I also do have 285 tires on here with spacers and it does have the spacer lift. So it kind of kills any aerodynamic ability that this truck had in the first place. But I have had a lot of people complain about the gas mileage in these trucks. Now, some people that have commented on previous videos not complaining about the gas mileage, they have a different gear ratio and they think they had a two wheel drive. But I have heard a lot of people complain about the gas mileage and it doesn't get any better as time goes on because I have 10,500 miles and it hasn't gotten any better. Now, I could probably go back to the stock tires, take off the spacer lift, but I was only getting 14 to 15 miles a gallon. I never saw 16 or 17 or any of this other shit that they say that these can get. So those are pretty much the main things driving me nuts. The squeaking noise in here, the click clacking around up the front, um, the brakes do make a squeaking noise and it's not because I have 10,000 miles, it's not because I've been towing heavy, I've only towed a few times with this truck from day one. And Ram 1500 owners, you guys are gonna comment down below because you know I'm right. These brakes are squeaky. And it's not because they're dirty or because they get a rock in them. They are just squeaky ass brakes. And I've actually seen on the forums, a few people have actually taken them in for a recall to see if they were gonna recall it. I don't believe they have yet, but there is something touching the rotor that should not be touching the rotor. And it's probably like a stupid little metal clip or something but the brakes are very noisy. Like it's kind of embarrassing going down the street in a brand new truck and your brakes are louder than the 1987 Geo Metro that hasn't changed their brakes for 300,000 miles. It's quite embarrassing if I do say so myself. That was one other thing. I forgot to add that one. Um, other than that, a couple little quirks here and there, but nothing that would make me not want to buy this truck that I've witnessed personally in this truck. I love this truck. I have a few friends that have them and they absolutely love these trucks as well. Now, let's get to the better, brighter side of the 2019 Ram 1500. What do I love about this truck? Holy shit, there's a long list, people. I love how the front end looks. It looks very much like a sporty truck. It doesn't have like the big, bold look to it. It has a nice sporty truck look for a half ton. It's got awesome LEDs in the headlights, in the taillights, all along the interior, very nice lighting system. It's got automatic high beams, automatic windshield wipers. This is just a Laramie, mind you. This is not a limited. This is not anything special. This is just a Laramie. It's got automatic high beams, automatic windshield wipers. It's got an awesome 8.4 inch touchscreen, which you could get in a 12 inch, but the resolution on this thing is amazing. If you don't believe me, go back and watch some of my videos. The rear view camera is one of the best in the industry right now. The resolution's impeccable. The whole setup, the way the screen is set up, the lettering, the coloring, it just all looks good and it flows very, very well. This has a remote start, push button to start. The tailgate drops from a button, not only in the truck, but also on the key fob. So you can pop the tailgate down by just walking up to it with your key fob, or if you're in the truck and someone's coming up to load something, you can actually release the tailgate from inside another cool ass feature. It's got front heated and cooled seats. Now you could get that in the rear, but that is an addition. This is four wheel drive. Um, my four wheel drive did go out on me once. There was a solenoid that actually was faulty from the factory, something happened and my four wheel drive was not engaging. However, my four wheel drive has worked ever since and that was fixed under warranty. But this is a four wheel drive truck if you're wondering. It has front and rear sensors. It's got lane assist. This one does not have lane assist. This one just beeps at you if you're getting out of hand and getting close to other vehicles. Um, 
one of the coolest features with all of these sensors is that when you have a trailer connected and the trailer brake is plugged in, I mean the trailer lights and everything are plugged into the system, it can, it can detect how long your trailer is and when you go to shift lanes, usually it'll beep at you if a car is too close. Now it beeps at you if a car is too close with the trailer back there. So it can detect if there's enough space for the truck and the trailer to be switching lanes safely. That is probably one of the best features, especially if you've ever towed at night or if you have a very dark colored trailer and it's hard to see, like an enclosed trailer that's black, it's hard to see at night. You can't see the cars coming or you can't see how far the car is back. This will tell you if you have enough room to move over or not. I think that is by far one of the best features. Now, as far as creature comforts go, it doesn't get much better than that. These are very comfy seats. I wouldn't say they're the comfiest in the industry, but they are very comfy seats. Heated and cooled, they go up and down, back, forward, left, right. They do all the cool shit that normal seats do. Um, heated steering wheel, the center console, as you guys know, the center console is absolutely massive. It's got so much freaking storage. I can't even use it all. It's almost like I bring more shit into this truck knowing that it has more storage, but the rear compartment is freaking huge. There's so much room back there. It is like the size of a mega cab without the extra mega cab. You can even lean the back seat back. It's got USB ports back there. It's got a three prong plug back there. So you charge a laptop, iPad, any of that stuff. I mean, it's got a three prong plug up here. Also, it's like you don't have to share a bunch of ports with everyone. Everyone's got their own port and everyone's got their own vents. So everyone could just leave each other alone. <laughs> It's, it's really awesome for road trips. I mean, it is a badass truck. Like I said, the interior, I think, is by far one of the best, if not the absolute best, in the game right now. Definitely, technology-wise, it is the best. It's got the best gauge cluster. It's got the best options and menus within there. It's definitely got the best screen, best screen resolution. I don't know if it has the comfiest seats, but they are definitely very comfy. You could sit in them all day. I remember owning my 2500 and the seats were definitely a lot firmer. These are comfy. And I've actually sat in the back also on a road trip and uh, I was very pleased with sitting back there, especially when the seats lean back. Pretty cool. So I'm David Van Voris. This is my 2019 Ram 1500 Laramie. This is a badass truck. I highly recommend it if you are in the half ton truck category if you're looking to buy one if you're looking to get back into one this is the truck to have right now i do believe that if you are thinking against it or for it just go drive one people ask me all the time they're like what do you think of it and i always tell them i say just go drive it and that will answer any questions you have now if you need to see like features and, and things like that that you may not have seen on a test drive you can watch some of my previous videos. I've tried to highlight some of the very cool options that sometimes you don't see when you're at the dealership because sometimes you do get a guy at the dealer that doesn't know what he's talking about and doesn't know some of the specific features that are cool to this Ram. They're just trying to sell you a truck. But if you are interested in this truck, I highly recommend you go test drive one. And for 10 to 15,000 off MSRP, it's a badass truck and it's definitely worth the price and it's priced very well for what you get. This is like a high-end luxury vehicle, but in a truck. And it's very inexpensive for a truck. So that's my 10,000 mile review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about the Ram 1500, I've got plenty of videos on it. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about them, but this is my 10,000 mile review, a little longevity review. I haven't had any problems with it. And the one problem I have had with it, I took it to the dealer and they fixed it right away. Like I said, there's always small things that you don't like and you kind of got to get over with certain vehicles. Not every vehicle is perfect. Really, there's no vehicle that's perfect. There's going to be things you like and dislike, but go test drive one. Let me know what you think. If you guys have any questions about these trucks, you can email me at davidvanvoris at hotmail.com. I will see you guys on the next video.